Lord. Good evening, everyone. This is the day, isn't it? Amen, amen, amen. Well, I want to greet you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for coming out to support me this evening. Love you, and I know you all love me. Amen. Um, for those who don't know, I am Reverend Patricia Howie, um, the first first lady, so they say. All right. I want to um, thank my pastor for trusting me with the word this evening. And I want <clears throat> to thank God for the word. Thank God that we learn how to live. Amen? Amen. And um, I want to tell you that I talked to Pastor. He's fine. They've had a wonderful time. And uh, they'll be back on Sunday. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And they'll be back on <laughs> and they'll be back on Wednesday. <laughs> and they'll be back on Wednesday. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so we're gonna get started. Um, we're in chapter five of Ephesians, and I do have another premark. We may get to it. First Peter three. So we're gonna pray and get started. Ephesians five and first Peter three. Let us pray. O oh, eternal and wise God, our Father, we come before you this evening just thanking you, thanking you for life, thanking you for loving us so much, thank you for teaching us how to live. God, we just want to say thank you. And Father, even now as we begin this service, we would be remiss if we did not invite your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, have your way. You know what I've studied. I ask you to bring things to my remembrance, and I ask you to speak through me what you would have me to say. And so I'm going to use the notes, but I'm going to listen for your spirit. Speak to me. I thank and praise you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, last week, Minister Webb started out in Ephesians 5. He went from 5.1 to 5.21. And he taught us from that scripture, number one, we can be believers of Jesus Christ. We can be believers of Jesus Christ. Number two, we can pattern ourselves after Jesus Christ. We have the ability to pattern ourselves after Jesus Christ. The third thing, as believers, we are light. We're light in a dark place. You know, it says that um, if the, um, you put the, light under the, put the light under the bushel, it can't be seen. So we have to be seen. We have to do good works so that people can see us and do what? Glorify our Father who is in heaven. Uh, number four, we should be filled with the Spirit. Is there anybody in here who does not, who is not filled with the Spirit? I think everybody in here is filled with the Spirit. That's good. Amen. Amen. And um, number five, believers should walk wisely. We've talked about that quite a bit, walking wisely. Now, I have a disclaimer before I start. I've started with a little story. When my son was in junior high school, would you believe it? A long time ago. When he was in junior high school, he was taking an algebra class. And word was out that this particular teacher, her name was Powitz, so you can imagine her um, ethnic. <laughs> um, anyway, um, there was word out that she was telling children they were dumb and they couldn't learn and that kind of thing. So I didn't want to start anything, so I said, I was trying to eat, I said, you, you know, um, do you think the teacher's saying anything to people about being dumb or anything? And so he said, I don't know, because she wasn't talking to me. <laughs> so so I, I just want to say that everything that I'm going to say may not pertain to you, pertain to you. Take what pertains to you, and the rest of it, chew it and spit it out, OK? All right, so let's, let's move on from there. All right, let's look at um, the scripture. We're going to start with verse 21. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the wife, even as Christ, excuse me, 
Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband as unto the Lord. 23, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. So I want to stop there for a minute. Minister Webb gave us the definition of submit as, number one, to be on one accord. Number two, to operate together in love, to work in ministry together. And then I wanted to add my definition, to yield without murmuring, to yield without murmuring, which means you can yield, but you might murmur about it. Did I miss something? <laughs> Pastor Minister, uh, Reverend Milhouse cutting up up here. All right. <laughs> so angry. All right. So um, when we look at 21, I wanted to say normally we start with 22, where they say wives submit to your own husbands. But when I, when I saw 21, saying we submit one to another. So that's not only in the marital state, but that's also in uh, our relationships. So a lot of times we find that she's too young, I'm not submitting to her. Or she's too old, I'm not submitting to her. Or I don't like her attitude, so I'm not submitting. But, but not in this church, because we don't do that in this church, right? All right. But this is for the people that are watching, but not in this church. All right, <laughs> so, so a lot of times people feel like if the, um, if the person isn't to their liking, they don't have to submit. But we have to submit not because we like the person, but because we love God. And so if we love God, then that makes, it's a whole, ball, a whole new ball game. We don't want to make him look bad, so... We, 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 as the flesh, you're talking about the flesh, that flesh will say, I don't like her, but it doesn't matter. You don't have to like her. You just have to work with them. And it's the same thing on your job. If you have a job, you don't have to like the boss, but you have to work as unto the Lord. We are supposed, our light's supposed to shine wherever we go. So it doesn't matter where we are, but especially here in the body of Christ. And then when you go out to a secular job, you should take that light with you. Because you want other people to, 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 to glean from you. You want them to know, what is it? I remember, um, matter of fact, at, uh, the brother in the booth. I was talking to one of the um, people in my group, and he said, the reason I came to this church, he said, because Brother Walltower, he said he was always happy. He was always smiling. And I wanted to know, well, what is it? And so he came to the church as a result of that. That's how we get people into the body of Christ. If we're grumbling and fussing and murmuring and complaining, who wants to come to your church? So that's what we have to remember that when we're out. Now, let's go back. Now, if that pertains to you, just look straight ahead and, and nobody will know. Amen? Amen. Okay. So now let's go on to um, the head. He says that, the man is the head of the, um, the household. And <clears throat> a lot of men take it wrong because they think it means they got the Lord over the household. But it does not mean that. When it says submit, and we're saying we're submitting one to the other, then that means that the husband submits to the wife and the wife submits to the husband. However, the husband does have the final say in so many words. <laughs> I remember, um, and then I, I had been married before, and um, when I married Reverend Howie, Pastor Howie, um, I was used to doing my own stuff. You know, I know how to take care of everything. And so uh, this was a particular time we had called the exterminator. And I was telling him, I said, well, I don't think we need all that. We just need them to do what the man said in the basement. He wanted to do the yard and the this and the basement and the cellar and the everything. So I said, we don't need all that. So then finally, what happened? Let me 
going. You paying for it? Okay, you go ahead and do it. Even though it was my money too, but it was like, okay, you do, you you pay for it. So, but 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 it's a learning thing. And um, on Sunday, Bishop did a teaching, and he was saying that marriage is work. And I was saying, not only is marriage work, just living is work. You know, the bodies, all that stuff, it's work. And every day you get up. You start work, <laughs> you know. But um, it is so important that we do what God tells us to do. Amen? So um, talking about the head, I was used to being the head. But then I, I love my church. Pastor Cherry taught us so much how to live. And I thought I knew how to live because I've been to college. You know, I thought I knew how to live. But it's not about that. I learned like from a, he used to, <laughs> one day I was in the, I used to teach the, the babies in the, um, in the preschool, in the, in the Sunday school. And so he said, one day I saw him, he said, um, how, he asked me, well, how are you doing? I said, I'm right, all right, I'm teaching the babies. He said, well, you're a babe, so it's all right for you to be in there with the babies, you know. <laughs> but um, the men, no offense men. But they're not the head because they're good looking. Y'all good looking, right? And they're not, <laughs> they're not the head because they're smarter. Some of y'all, y'all real smart. But that's just the, that's the hierarchy. That's the way God planned for it to be. Somebody had to be the head. And so it's unfortunate when the head is not in place because we have to use plan B. Sometimes the husbands are you know, they're, they're gone or they're, they're passed or they're not connected to the family. So somebody else, the next person has to become the head. But basically, the hierarchy is God, Christ, the man, the woman, and then the family. And when, you know, that's God's perfect. That's his best. And when we do God's best, you can't lose. You can't lose. I don't care what they say about you. You can't lose. When you, God's best. And I love, I love it when um, I do something and, I'll, and, and I'm so appreciative of God blessing me. And, and my husband used to say, when you do, when you stay in God's will, his perfect will, and sometimes he'll bless me with something. I'm not, you know, I might want something. I say, eh, I'm not bothered about that today. And then it'll just appear. And Howie, how, excuse me, Pastor Howie, y'all know I call him Howie. He used to say, that's a wink from God. Don't you like a wink from God? I love a wink from God. I know I'm doing right then. I said, oh, shucks, I'm doing good now. I'm doing good. <laughs> okay. So, um, um. But you know, wives, we also, even though you're not a wife, you may be a wife at one time, you may not, you may have been a wife at one time, but we have a responsibility as women to train up our girls how to be good wives, how to be good Christians, really, good Christian women. Um, if you, did I give you 1 Peter 3? All right, if you look at 1 Peter 3, Verse 1 says, likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. And they always say, your own husband. So in other words, don't be in subjection to somebody else's husband. Like Pastor White is somebody else's husband, right? All right. But a lot of times people love their pastors, and we love our pastor, but he's not our own husband. All right. So we want to, um, likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. While they behold your chaste conversation or your way of life coupled with fear. So sometimes the husband might not be in place, but wives have the ability or empowerment through the Holy Spirit to bring those husbands in. There was a couple, um, I remember we went to a um, um, marriage retreat, 
right down here. First one I ever went to, Pastor Cherry, down in um, Charles County. At, it was the Holiday Inn then. And um, I knew this couple from my old church. So I knew he didn't come to church. I said, how did you get here? And he said, my wife. He said, I watched her. And I watched her. And he said, then I said, I'm going over there to see what they're doing. And to this day, he's at the parent church working with the young people. And been there, I mean, for over 20 years now. So it's the wise. Not only that, not only are we responsible to the husbands, we're responsible to our young people. Our young people are confused, a lot of them. So we need to be that example. It's not always by beating them over the head with the Bible, but we have to dress like we want them to dress. We have to talk like we want them to talk. We have to have an attitude. Now, does it mean they're going to do what we want them to do? Not always. But we have the responsibility, and we have to answer to God. A lot of times God will tell me to say something, um, even to my son, and I say, God, I don't want to say that. Say it. And I'm like, but God, I don't want to say it. But, but he's holding me responsible if I don't say it. So whether he receives it, whether it starts a con a, a, a discourse, I have to do what God tells me to do. And that's the same thing that we as wives have to do, Amen. women have to do. We have a lot of young people who need help, and some of them in the churches. And a lot of them <clears throat> do not know how to, how to respond to authority. You know, there's so many jobs out here available, but they can't get the jobs because they don't know how to conduct themselves. So we really have the responsibility to teach our young people. Amen? I don't see how I'm going to finish because I'm, I'm all, all. Anyway, all right. So that, we, that took us down to verse 24. Let's go down to 25. Um, number 25 says, Husbands, love your own, love your wives. <laughs> you say love your own, but that, I'm put that in there. Love your own wives. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. So actually, what this scripture is doing is making an analogy between marriage and the church. We are considered the bride of Christ. And so that's why... Husbands have to love their wives because Christ loved the church. He gave himself for it. He sacrificed. And so when men sacrifice for their wives, when they sacrifice financially, naturally, then what happens? It, 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 makes, them, um, it makes them, makes the wives love them even more. And, and so who wouldn't trust a man who, who watches out for them? Who cares for them? We we want her. I mean, you know, you sometimes it, it sometimes it'll be overbearing. You know, you you kind of say it's overbearing, but when you don't have it anymore, then you know that it was so good. And I can remember because Howie used to always want to hold my hand. I'm like, hold my hand. I ain't no kid. <laughs> but then after a while, I was like, hmm, this is all right, you know. And, um, and, and I often I tell people, I say, I would never marry anybody else because I've been to the mountain. And I would never find another husband like Howie. Yeah, that's my husband. Yeah, so, all right. Um, so, uh, husbands, you are to love your wives as Christ loved the church. So when your wife gets on your nerves, just remember... Christ loved the church. <laughs> I got to love my wife. Amen. Amen. And, and we do get on each other's nerves. But like I said before, it's work. And so we got to work. Say, we got to work. That's right. We, and we have to work hard. Amen. And, the, and you know, the older we get, the harder it seems like we have to work, right? <laughs> amen. <laughs> All right. Amen. All right. So, um. Then, let me see, the husband and the wife become one flesh. 
Well, we, we know that from um, reading in Genesis, that as you take on that other person, that um, when they hurt, you hurt. When they're happy, you're happy. So we want to, um, want to um, remember that. All right, let's go on to, oh, I, you know what? And you know, I asked you about being, being um, filled with the Holy Spirit. That is what makes it so easy to do or make it easy. It's not easy, but it makes it doable. You know, like my husband used to say, it's not easy, but it's doable. Right, okay. All right, so um, the husbands and the wives have to complement one another. In other words, where one is weak, the other one probably is strong. You know, like um, I, I'm more of a person who I like to flower stuff up, you know. One second. I don't, uh, I don't, I don't like to be forward with people. I like to, I like to tell them what I need to tell them, but I dress it up and make it sound good. <laughs> Pastor Howie, tell you he's straight, straight from the hip. You know, this is, yeah, he cut you. <laughs> And so that was like a complimentary thing, you know. And so you said sometimes you have one person who likes to spend money and the other person is frugal. So you had to work together, you know. But, don't, but husbands, don't forget now, you got to make these wives happy. Amen? Amen. All right. All right. <laughs> so ladies, I'm doing good. Okay, I'm doing good. <laughs> I'm doing good over there. <laughs> All right. We want our wives, you want your wives to look good. You want them to smell good. Because then they're going to act good. All right. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> what did they tell you the secret? <laughs> Treat her like a queen. That's all I can say. That's your queen. Treat her like a queen. Okay. So, um, and like I say, you have to work to become one flesh. We say becoming one flesh, it, it's work. And I think anybody in here who's been married a long time, and I see a lot of you who have been married a long time, that it's work. All right. Sometimes you cry, and sometimes you laugh. Uh -huh. But as long as you're laughing more than you cry, you're doing good. Amen. <laughs> if you're with somebody and you're crying a lot, I don't know. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, Let's go, let's go, uh, let's go back to the scripture. Uh, I mean, I say, how did I get over there? That, this, this, this um, thing here is doing this to me. All right, so then we stopped at, um, oh, in 27, I like that. He says that he might present it to himself, a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. And then I, I, so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. And I ask, um, 29, for no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. Um, the only thing I, I found in that was that a lot of us don't know how to love. You know, people don't, we say respect, um, the wives respect or revere the husbands, and the husbands love the wives like, like um, they love their own bodies. But uh, many times we feel like putting clothes on and smelling good is taking care of your body. But that's not it. And men particularly need to take more care of their physical bodies. A lot of men do not go to the to the doctor, and they don't check. There's some numbers that you should be in, 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 in um, knowledge of. So men, if you're not taking care of yourself physically, you need to take care of yourself. You need to eat right. You need to get rest. A lot of men think, I'm Superman. Yeah, you might be Superman when you're 20, but then that doesn't help you when you're 40 or 50. You have to start taking care of your body, right? You know, from here, you know, when you're on your own. So please, men, get your physicals. Take care of yourself. Don't be embarrassed to wear glasses. Don't be embarrassed to wear a hearing aid. Don't be embarrassed to take a cane. 
do what you have to do to live well. You know, because it's a difference between living and living well. And we want to live well. Amen? Um, so then... Um, In 30, 30, yeah, 30. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. So we are members of the body. We are, the church is the body. And, and we have to remember how much Christ loved us. I mean, can you imagine somebody dying for you? And sometimes people don't realize how important they are. God loves us so much that he would send his son, that his son would be able to, to, um, to walk among men to give us direction of how to live. We learn how to live. Um, and then in um, 31, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. And we've talked about that one flesh, how we're coming together. This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. That's a mystery. But also, um, I, uh, Pastor Cher used to always say, that mystical union. You know, like sometimes you, you might look at your spouse, and a lot of times there has to be some physical attraction. But then, you know, sometimes you say, well, he likes this and I don't like this. But, you know, when they courting or whatever you all want to call it now, everybody like everything you like. You know, they, oh, yeah, we like, yeah, and then when you get married, I don't like that. Well, I thought you liked that. Well, I don't like that anymore. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> um, 33, nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. So there is some love going on, even though we say reverence, but there is love also. Um, and how we really are able to get along together, husband, wife, employee, employer, um, church member, ministry head, worker, Holy Spirit. We have to rely on the Holy Spirit because that's the only person who's going to be able to keep us focused because the flesh will just go crazy on you. You know, you'll be ready to cuss and fuss at everybody, but... But the Holy Spirit will hold us. He will help us even in a time when um, it's not going well the way we plan. But we have to always remember, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all our ways, we have to acknowledge him, and he will direct our paths. He'll show you what to do when it's not going right. You know, he tell you, because um, a lot of times I used to get angry because I wouldn't know I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to think fast enough to come up with an answer. That would be for people or for, for my husband. But I learned that was good because I keep a quiet and neat spirit, you know, and I'm not going to say anything. Because after you put something out there, you can't take it back. It's out there. And the feelings are hurt, and it takes a long time to recover that. You're not going to, I mean, and it might not ever get where it was before. So the best thing to do is do like I do, act like you don't remember just get, I mean, you know, just get, you know, I don't remember, I, I don't, somebody said I don't remember, um, but it, not that I don't remember, but I just couldn't think of anything, and, and, um, and, and I remember one time something happened at church, and so when I got home, I said, I said, so-and-so said such and such a thing to me, so he, he said, well, they were trying to insult you, I said, well, I ain't even get it then, <laughs> I was all the way home. I said I was supposed to be as upset about it, but I, I didn't get it until I got home. Okay. And I said, well, that was a blessing, wasn't it? <laughs> so sometimes we have to um, just, just be cool, keep a, keep, keep a quiet and neat spirit, because like I say, you can't reel it back. You know, so. All right. And that's the same thing in ministry. A lot of times people upset us at church, and we stop and think, and just chill. And then when you go home, the Holy Spirit will speak to you and tell you what to say. There have been instances in here where people have said things or done things, and I, I could have been offended, but I decide it's my choice whether I want to be offended or not. 
I'm not going to be offended. You're not going to offend me. I'm not going to let anybody get on my last nerve. Amen? And that's one reason why I exercise like I do, because it takes away the stress. And anything that bothers me, I talk to God. Sometimes I can walk through the park. I love to walk in the park. And just look at the trees and the, the lake and everything. And I've talked to God. And one day I was in the park, and this man came by, and he was outdoing me. He had his hands up walking around praying. I said, well, praise the Lord. But we have to um, learn how to channel that energy that we have. Because somebody's always going to try to get on your nerves, you know. But it's up to you whether you receive it. All right, so we're going to move on um, to chapter 6. Because we're talking about the family. And Christian families are important, especially blended families. Because um, we have more blended families now. Um, when um, my husband and I married, we both had um, children. And so, um, you know, the mamas and their sons, um, you know, at first it was like, I don't want you to say nothing to my son. And I was like, please, say something. And I would tell him, you know, he said, and, and Pops did so-and-so. I said, you know what? When, he, when, he, when, when he's teaching you how to drive and when he's doing all this stuff for you, he's all right. So then you don't want to be disciplined by him. So it doesn't work like that. And I say, you take the good, you got to take the bad. And so we have to train up our children, especially in blended families. And it's so important for people to get counseling, you know, to go to marriage counseling. When we, when we, when we got married, we would say, we've been married before. We don't need no counseling. <laughs> But then as we began to teach and be in ministry, we would tell people, you've been married before, but you weren't married to her. You weren't married to him. Whole different new ball game. You know, you might know some basics, and maybe the basics you knew weren't even good. You know, so we have to um, seek counseling. It doesn't hurt for people to do that. All right, so let's look at chapter 6. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. That is the first um, commandment with promise, promise of long life and good life. And so we want, we want that for our children. And then uh, verse 4, and ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Um, the old, uh, uh, pa our, uh, our founding pastor used to say, you need the Old Testament and the New Testament. The father is the Old Testament with the law, and the mothers are the New Testament with the grace. And so you need both. So you know when you don't have both, it kind of, it's, it's an imbalance. And so your children will get, you know, they won't be well balanced. That's not God's best when we don't have um, the mother and the father together. So we really need our young people to really be very serious about um, their relationships and who they fellowship with, you know, so that they make good choices when they marry, you know, and make sure that we train them up so that they are good choices. You know, that makes a difference, yeah. Um, and then let's go to verse 5. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in singleness of heart as unto Christ, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. With good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall be he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. A lot of people do not like the scripture that refers to slavery. It's real. It was real. It's still real because we, we in slavery, you know, with the drugs and everything. So, But um, I, 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 I um, made an analogy of the the slavery to employees and employers, your work, basically. 
And so um, employees work as unto the Lord. Extra effort. That's what uh, Bishop taught us on Sunday. We put forth that extra effort. The, the, you know, if you just do the basics, um, that's okay. But when you put in that extra effort, when you get dressed and put time in whatever project it is, whether it's on your job, whether it's in church or whatever, you're going to get good results because you put in that extra effort. Um, and we want it to be said, well done, when we check out. Amen? At least I know I want, I want God to say, well done. All right. And then um, those who are employers have to treat others as they want to be treated. Uh, a lot of times we find that people don't, they, they don't think about the fact that, how would you want me to, to do this to, how do you want me to treat you? How would you like that? Um, I remember, this is not about employee, but I remember I used to pick up my grandson and take him to, um, take him to, um, <laughs> take him home. And he would have the snacks. And the snacks, I'd be fixing the snacks and giving them to him to take to school. And he would say, they get in the car, I say, are you going to offer me some of your snacks? Daddy, he got the mouse. I said, I pulled over. I said, well, you just don't want to ride in my car. You're just going to have to get out of my car. <laughs> so, so the next day, you want some of my snacks? Thank you very much. <laughs> but I was teaching him. I told him, I said, you have to treat people the way you want to be treated. How would you want to be uh, somewhere and somebody don't offer you something, and even if you don't want it? Offer it to them, you know. But the main thing I, I, I really wanted to say is that we have to treat people the way that we want to be treated. And I think that's very important. Even when they don't treat you the way that, that they should, we have to, as Christians, we have to treat them the way that we would want them to treat us. Amen? Amen. Well, I think I'm done. Praise the Lord. So let's thank God for his word. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads. And we have talked about Christian families, and, and we've made an analogy between the church and the marriage or the, the family. Um, but if you're not a part of God's family, you may not have really understood. And at this time, I'm going to ask that if you're online, I think everybody in here has already um, given their lives to the Lord. But if you're online and you have not given your life to the Lord, or if you're in a backslidden state and you want to renew your relationship so that you can have a good life, I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, for saving me. I thank you for Jesus, who gave his life that I might be free. I have sinned and I've fallen short, but I thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness. You said if I ask that you would save me. Save me, Lord, and I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.